So, let us recall uh, a radical of an ideal i is set of all x in A such that x power n belongs to i for some n in n. And then we proved that radical of uh, i or what are the properties that we proved? Yeah, radical of radical of i is same as radical of i. Radical of i is the whole ring if and only if i is the whole ring. This is uh, we did not prove this I guess, but we stated this. Uh, then radical of i intersection j is same as radical of i j same as radical of i intersection radical of j. Yeah. So, now what can you say about radical of i plus j? Okay. So, this is certainly radical of i is contained here and radical of j is contained here. Therefore, their sum is contained here. So, the natural question is whether they are equal. Okay. So, we need to check whether if I take an element here, it is here. So, let us uh, start with an element uh, x in a radical of i plus j. What does that mean? That means, x power n belongs to i plus j for some n in n. So, the question is whether we can say that you know this x power n is can be written as some a plus b where you know a belongs to some power of a belongs to i and a power of I and mean, whether this x can be written as the question is x can be written as a plus b where a belongs to radical of i and b belongs to radical of j or in other words some a power m belongs to radical of uh, sorry i and b power uh, some n belongs to j. What we know is that x power n belongs to radical of uh, I mean, x power n belongs to i plus j. Uh, suppose you write something like this, what is x power n? x power n is a power n n choose 1 a power n minus 1 b again n choose n minus 1 a b power n minus 1 plus b power n. Now, does not really seem to be any of in this form, right. So, I mean it does not lead anywhere this. So, it may be you know this is it is not clear we do not have a direct approach. So, let us try to modify you know what what are the other possibilities. So, radical of this is contained here. So, therefore, if I take one more radical on the left uh, on this side right hand side what do I get? If I take one more radical on this what do I get? Radical of radical of i plus radical of j radical of this one and on this side, it is the same. 
right that means this is still contained in this now do you see some obvious relation there so what what does this say let me write it here so this one implies that radical of i plus j is contained in radical of radical of i plus radical of j now do you see some obvious relation here see you have two i mean you have an uh, inequality here you have two ideals on either side both of them are radicals right this is radical of an ideal this is radical of an ideal now do you see some relation between the ideals inside do you see relation between this and this i plus j is contained in radical i plus radical j i mean i is contained in radical i j is contained in radical j therefore this is contained here and what does that mean this is contained here, right i plus j is contained in radical i plus radical j and that would imply that radical of i plus j is contained in so what did we prove therefore radical of i plus j is radical of radical of i plus radical of j you would have just used that property which one ha ah so what are you saying ah so we have we have only used those two properties right this no i think that only using this property we can ah we can use this other property which is radical of i plus radical of j okay we can substitute i as radical of i and j as radical of j ha okay yeah so from here you can say radical of uh, uh, i mean radical of i plus radical of j ha huh, and this is obviously contained here yeah yeah these two are uh, i mean both of them follow from the basic properties of radicals itself okay so that's another uh, property now what can you say about so we have uh, you know if i take a prime ideal and look at radical of this what would be this can we say something about this first of all can we say that p is can we see that p is contained here if i take any element in p say x x power n belongs to p power n therefore x belongs to radical of p power n therefore this contains p for sure is is equal to p did we prove something about radicals 
uh, oh we need to prove uh, okay so let let us let us uh, prove this uh, let us keep this aside make an observation okay uh, this is i think i made this observation some time back but let's uh, do that again radical of an ideal is what yeah this is phi inverse phi is the natural map from a to a mod i phi inverse of nil radical of a mod i now what is nil radical of a mod i this is intersection of all let us call this p bar p bar prime ideal of a mod i what is the relation between so if i have a collection of ideals uh, suppose i have a ring homomorphism f from a to b be a ring homomorphism and i alpha be a collection of ideals in b what is it i mean can you say something about this is so over alpha this is the same as f inverse i alpha this is uh, in fact basic set theory okay now so let us apply this here what do you get what is f inverse of the nil radical i mean phi inverse of the nil radical what is the phi for what is what are the inverse images phi inverse of nil radical of a mod i this is equal to phi inverse of intersection p bar p bar prime ideal Con, uh, in a mod i this is same as intersection of phi inverse p bar now what can you say about phi inverse of p bar it will be a prime ideal in a containing i so this is equal to and they are in one to one correspondence right so therefore this is this intersection is equal to i'll write p p prime ideal in a containing i so where did we start with we started with radical of i it is the inverse image of the nil radical and we have proved that the inverse image of the nil radical is nothing but intersection of all prime ideals containing i so therefore what we have proved is radical of i is intersection of p intersection of all prime ideals in a containing i
is this clear it's the intersection of all so radical of an ideal is intersection of all prime ideals containing that ideal so now let us get back to this property radical of p power n contains p now by this property what is radical of p power n it is the intersection of all prime ideals containing p power n can you think of some prime ideal containing p power n p right p is a prime ideal containing p power n therefore this is intersection of all prime ideals containing p power n and p is one such prime therefore this is contained in the in all the elements in the intersection in particular p therefore this is contained in p we have already proved it is it contains p okay so radical of uh, yeah p is a prime ideal containing p power n therefore radical of p power n is contained in p so these two together this if you call it star and if you call this star star then implies that radical of p power n equal to okay Which one? Uh, there was the properties were written. Ah, radical of i j is equal to radical of i intersection radical of j. If we use that fact here, huh? So uh, radical of p to the power n is radical of p. Yeah. Radical of p. Huh? And radical of p is intersection of all prime ideals containing p. So. Huh? So. And p is itself a prime ideal containing p. Then radical of p is actually equal to. so what we see again what you get is a containment right radical of p is contain radical of p will con, uh, contain p right and you are taking a product there uh, see there is a product as well as intersection right you are saying okay let let's let's uh, let's see radical of p power n this is equal to radical of p Oh, all of them are p itself. Okay, yeah, that's. Uh, huh. So this is equal to radical of p. Now. Now, if we use the fact that this is actually equal to the intersection of all prime ideals containing p. Then ah, we have to use the fact that ah. So then, what do you get? This is contained in p. Right, and then this is containing. Why? Why should this? Ah, p is all. P is contained, and we have proved exactly just that. It, we did not use this property. We simply observed it from here. Okay, we have to ultimately we have to use this this fact. Okay, so that is there in the middle. The other side, other two sides, you can use. Uh, any of the properties but yes this is another way to observe this uh, property <coughs> so looking at this do you think of a natural question yes radical of 
what do you want to ask? What would be radical of maximal ideal by the way? It has to be this itself right because it, con it will contain m and we have proved that it is the whole ring if and only if this is the whole ring. So, therefore, this has to be m itself. Okay. Now, so let me see radical of an ideal is intersection of all prime ideals containing that given ideal. So, suppose this is prime ideal itself. Okay. Can we say something about I or you know what would be natural question to ask about I? It cannot need not be a prime ideal right. So, the does this imply I is some power of a prime? See for example, suppose you take the case in z, when can suppose I have n z, what would be radical of this n z? Suppose your n is p 1 power alpha 1 up to p n p r power alpha r, this is the prime factorization of n. What would be radical of this? p 1 up to p r z and when can this be a prime idea? if r is 1 that is the only way radical of n z can be a prime ideal. If r is 1 then n is a power of a prime. So, is that generally true? This is something think about it we will uh, address this question sometime later, but it is nice to experiment with uh, you know this question try to uh, understand. See one of the ideas uh, in commutative ring theory <coughs> is you know trying to see how far properties of you know z uh, goes through or how does these properties generalize into commutative ring theory. So, this is one such that we can see in z but is it true in general in ring theory when we take radicals is it true. Okay. So, let us uh, think about this question, uh, we will come back to this question uh, at a later stage. Now, let us move on to study you know If I have a ring homomorphism f from A to B be a ring homomorphism, okay. Suppose I take an ideal, let us take an ideal I in A. then f of i need not be an idea right. This we have already seen we have uh, you can take lot of examples and uh, whenever I and mean most often if you take uh, yeah z to q is one uh, quick example even if you take any of the uh, you take any ring homomorphism which is not on to 
we can find this. You, know? you do not really need to uh, do only with z and q. Take, you have seen lot of examples of ring homomorphisms now. So, take one of them which is not on to and that will give you this one. But then this set is relevant and we uh, say let i e be the ideal of b generated by f of i. What does that mean? That is i e is set of all x i or you know a i f x i i from 1 to n a i in b x i in a uh, sorry x i in i and n in n take all finite linear combinations of these elements. It is basically the ideal generated by this set. It is like vector space generated by this set. It is the same thing okay, in the case of uh, ideals. Now, if I take an ideal j be an ideal j in uh, b, what can you say about f inverse of j? Yeah? This is is an ideal in A. right. So, this is denoted by contracted I uh, j contracted. So, this is see E is for the sim uh, for extended, we are extending I to B in some sense or here we are contracting j to a. This is denote f inverse j by j c. So, imagine the situation I have a to b, I have i here that is f of i b, we will write it this is basically i extended. Now, I have j here that comes back to a by f inverse of j which is also denoted by j contracted. Yes. This is just to uh, show that this is the set of all linear combinations of, of elements from here and here. If you look at this i e, that is it is of the form b f i. Yes. Yeah. So, I am looking at yeah i goes to f of i, but here I am talking about the correspondence between ideals in a and you know through this extension and contraction. If I look at only f of i, this is not an ideal. So, we can relate i with i e, i extended. Okay. We are only, I am not saying that this is, okay, this is not I should probably do this. I look at this connection between ideals here and ideals there. I goes to I extended. 
and j goes to j contracted. Uh -huh. That is the <coughs> natural question, right. We, we have two ways of moving, right. One, I start something here, go there and come back. What do we get? Similarly, I start with an ideal here, come back here and then go, go back again, extend it. Do you get the same idea? First, let us look at one or two examples. Again, you know the Uh, will it give the same thing? F of f inverse of j. Yeah. So, let us look at see yeah probably you have this example in mind if you have this the natural inclusion map. What do you get? So, I have I start with any n z. I go here what is x what is the extension of this? it will be the whole q, right. If this is i, then i e is q. So, if I contract it back, I get the whole of z. They are not equal. Now, suppose I take z to z x. the natural inclusion map. N is mapped to N itself. What do I get? I start with an N z here. What is its extension here? What is its extension here? n z x and what if I contract it here, what do I get? If I take, so this is, so this is my i, this is my i extended. So, I send it back, I extend it and I contract it. I n z x come back to this one. What do I get? Do I get n z or do I get anything more? So, the question is what are the integers in n z x? What are the integers available in n z x? So, okay, before going into this one, let us make a simple observation that will you know simplify this question. Suppose I have a you know if A is a subring of B, if A is a subring of B and this is the natural inclusion map, okay, and if I have an ideal I here, then what is i e is nothing but i b, right. I look at all b linear combinations of elements of i. And what is, if I have j here, what is j contraction? No, forget about i here. I am starting with a, an ideal, arbitrary ideal b. Uh, arbitrary ideal j in b and looking at j contraction. This is nothing but j intersection with a, right. When I am taking f inverse, if j contains an element of b, but not an a, it is inverse image is empty set, there is nothing there. And if it is an element in A, then it is precisely that element itself. So, therefore, this is nothing but 
j intersection a. So, let us come back to this one. What would be its contraction here? It is set of all integers in n z x. What are the possible integers in n z x? It is basic uh, that is uh, that requires a proof, but this is intuitively it is clear that it is n z all integers in n z x. What is n z x? It is collection of all polynomials whose or coefficients are divisible by n. Okay. Now, it should contain n z naturally. Now, can it contain any other uh, natural number, I mean any other integer? See, it is by definition it is, it has to be uh, if, if an element is there, n should divide there. So, therefore, any element there is a multiple of n. So, therefore, it is all integers or n z x intersection z is precisely n z. You want to ask something? No, okay. Okay, so, now do you see in general do you see some relation between these extensions, contractions and so on. Can you say something about I extend this and contract it back? Can you say some see I have an ideal I, I extend it to B and so this is in general. So, let f from A to B be a ring homomorphism. let i be an ideal in A. So, I extend it to B and then contract it. We have already seen that it is, it need not necessarily be equal to i. It will contain i right. This is if I start with an element uh, if I start with an element in i then x by you know x times 1 see b is again committed during the identity. So, f inverse oh sorry f of x is in i extended therefore, f inverse of f of x that contains x therefore, x is there in this one. So, i is contained here. Now, and j be an ideal in b. Therefore, what uh, similar j contraction extension is contained in j. If I start with element x in j contraction extension, that means there exists some y. So, how do you how do you show this? Y is in j contraction extension. Now, I want to say that y belongs to j. By definition, what is this ideal? This is set of all finite linear combinations of the form, uh, you know, some, uh, 
some uh, z j z i where z i belong to f inverse of uh, I mean j contracted which is f inverse of j right and a i belong to a uh, b uh, uh, sorry f of f of j contracted and uh, this is finite linear combinations. See if I start with this, uh, if I start with an arbitrary element and take something of this form, one can of course uh, you know proceed, but this is nothing but ideal generated by all elements in f of j contracted. So, if I prove that every element in this z i in f of j contracted, then all the linear combinations will be in the j contracted extended. See if I show z i belong to uh, j contracted extended uh, sorry j contracted uh, this implies z i belong to j if if I show this that will naturally imply that this will imply j contracted extended is contained in j. Is that clear? I do not have to take all elements of this form. If or in other words this is contained in j will imply the ideal generated by this will be in j or in other words j contracted extended will be in j that is what I am saying. So, we only have to prove that this containment is true this will automatically imply this is true. So, let us try to prove this is true that becomes pretty obvious now right f of j contracted is contained in j if I take an element in y is in j contracted what does that mean this implies that f of y is indeed in j and that implies that f of j contracted is contained in j and that implies that f of j contracted and the ideal generated by this or in other words j contracted extended is contained in j. Okay. Is this clear? So, the second, so here what, what did we do to prove that an ideal uh, let us call is uh, call uh, i 1 is contained in an ideal i 2. We only have to prove that generators of i 1 is contained in i 2. If all the generators of i 1 is contained in an ideal i 2, then the whole i 1 has to be in i 2. So, that is the idea that we have used here. The generators of I j contracted extended is nothing but f of j contract. So, to prove that this is here we only have to prove that the generators are in j and that is exactly what we prove. And this is a trick that we uh, will keep using in future as well whenever when we do module theory as well. In the modules if again same thing if 
a module is contained in another module can be proved using the same trick. Okay, so, now can we go one step further what do we get? I start with an i, I extend it to b, come back to a, I get i extended contracted. What if I again go back to b? What I have is i extended contracted and then next. So, let, let me remove these brackets, I will just simply write one after other. i extended then contracted and then extended. So, by the by this property see i extended contracted is it contains i. Now, if I extend this So, I can think of this as i extended this contains this is contained in i extended right. But I have an ideal say this containment is there if I extend this it will automatically see if I have i 1 contained in i 2 that will automatically implies i 1 extended will contain uh, will be contained in i 2 extent. So, therefore, this equation implies i extended is contained in i e c e while thinking of this as taking this ideal and contracting and extending using property 2 we have this is contained in i e i extend it. So, therefore, these two together says that i extended contracted and extended again what we get is i extended. Similarly, if I take uh, so this is property 3. So, this is equal to i extended property 4 is i take j contracted extended and contract again what should we get? J contraction that is again natural uh, try to prove this this way and there is one more uh, property. So, if uh, if C is the set of or contracted ideals of A that is all I mean some f inverse j for some j in A and B is the set of all extended ideals of B oh well I am using same notation. So, I will uh, E is yeah then do you see some relation between these two. Then C uh, set of all I such that I E C is I and E is set of all ideals J such that J contracted extended is equal to J. Okay. Okay. So, we will start module theory in the next class.